Hey friends, welcome back. It's mid-July and we're in the middle of a heat wave, if you didn't already notice. So today, Chris and I will discuss how heat in the sun can affect those of us with lupus and some other autoimmune diseases. We'll also explore how we can best manage our symptoms in these crazy conditions and how to make our indoor spaces more outdoor friendly. Chris, thanks for being here. And being down in Virginia, you must be feeling this heat more than we are up in Minnesota. Surely, <laughs> like there's there's times you know if you if there's someone who has to like walk your dog or just you know just walking outside like i was just joking um not too long ago uh with a colleague because our, our, our parking lot at work um there was a spot that has like no shade someone's like oh they need a tree right here and i was like yeah the way it's so hot you could put a cake in as soon as like, by the time you got off of work you'd have a fully baked cake like it really seems that hot uh, but thankfully we had a really good uh thunderstorm last night so it cooled down today was cool. I was like, ooh, 89, look at us. Like, <laughs> so, it, and it feels like 89. It's not 89 that feels like 102. It's actually 89 degrees, so that's been nice. So are you even going outside these days in that weather? You know, it's such an interesting uh, balance because a a as folks who um, have lupus or other autoimmune uh, diseases that can affect your joints can attest to, the AC can be painful too. Like we don't need the extremes, right? So there have been days this summer, I haven't had the joint pain, but I've gone outside just to quickly defrost, right? And it's, it's a blessing to have central air. It's a blessing to have air conditioning of any sort. But there have been times where my body's just literally too cold. And so just going outside and just walking around for a little bit, even though it's like a kajillion degrees outside has still been wonderful just because of how cold it is on the inside. This is absolutely a first world problem. I, I apologize. I got, I'm hearing myself. But at the same time, being outside for too long, it just doesn't feel safe either, you know? So you got to really be careful and touch and go and all that good stuff. Yeah, I've definitely felt it too with the joint pain and that comes with the heat. And then people can also have more fatigue. But you have that side of it. Sometimes with our medication, that right. can make us more sensitive. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, it's just really, uh, you know, sometimes I've worn like hoodies outside and people be like, you're making me hot. Like, you, like bro, I was like, I'm really just trying to protect myself uh, right. from, from the sun. But my, my wife, uh, when we went to Costco, pointed out like a really, uh, I think, uh, age appropriate UV hat. So, so I was able to like kind of wear it and, <laughs> and protect myself and still have a little drip, as the kids say, you know? Because yeah. Swag, swaggy out here. <laughs> They're getting better, like with the hats. And so this shirt is actually UPF. They're coming out with so much more, many more lines as far as protection. Right. So I'm still able to cover my arms and it's right. not like hot. Exactly. Exactly. And honestly, I feel like we may be the cutting edge for the rest of the world because as these temperatures continue to soar, I think everyone's going to need a UPF shirt. You know what I mean? Like everyone's going to need that. There's the heat, but then there's also the humidity. And yeah. I don't know if you get a lot of humidity where you're at. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The humidity. There's, there's days where you feel like you can drink the air. Absolutely. So being up in Minnesota with all of our lakes... The humidity has been horrendous this yeah, week. Today, yeah. today I asked Alexa, and she's like, "It will be ninety four percent." I was like, "Okay, oh. I guess we're we're swimming today." That's right. <laughs> That's right. No need to iron. Just walk outside, and everything's just gonna <laughs> be steamed. That's, so That's a big issue for me personally because I feel like I swell instantly. Yeah. Um, I hear you on the extreme temperatures because. <laughs> You may think this is crazy, but we keep ours at 78. I, I don't know. No judgment. No judgment. I I, un, I understand. I, I am fighting to get to 73. I, I it, it is it is an act of Congress <laughs> to, <laughs> to get that. You know, because, you know, I, I had, we were talking about this. We have a, a, a dear friend of ours who their home I, on a good day. 
like when they're feeling generous, they put the AC up to six. But they they keep their house like it's an ice box. I was like, who who needs to be this cold? Like I don't understand. So on a good day, they're like, oh, we'll warm things up. Let's get to sixty. So when you say seventy eight, this sounds like paradise to me. You know what I mean? I, no, no judgment. No judgment. Sixty. You need a coat in that weather. And that's what I'm saying. Too cold. We like to keep it a little bit warmer because it's just, I don't want to be freezing and it's a balancing act. Yeah, it's, it's just really, uh, I, I think what has been a help is to really like wear layers and to be able to have like the flexibility. If I'm in a space where, you know, I'm too hot, I can kind of like, you know, drop down to, to, to a, drop a layer. But if I'm in a place that's like really going to freeze me, to be able to have like a, a overcoat or overlay around that that's going to allow me to, you know, not suffer in either extreme temperature. Because extremes just are not right. For, we talk about how hot it is and being outside is tough, but we've spent 97% of our time indoors anyway. That's right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. When we are inside, we are still getting the benefits of that natural light just looking at images of nature and water can yeah. uplift your mood and decrease stress levels. That's the truth. You saying that reminds me of when the quarantine was at its height and oh, yeah. I was teaching online and you know, you had like a full day of staring at your screen. I, I found myself just opening my window and just looking outside, like looking at a a leaf you're just looking at some grass like i just really needed to see some nature and it like reoriented me it felt like it really helped to reset my orientation we physically and mentally need to be able to see beyond the confinement or constraints of our homes agreed agreed yeah it, it, there is something that happens to you know your your mental health but also like your expectation of the world when you just allow yourself to be limited to like one setting. I think like we as human beings, you know, we, we crave a connection to nature, uh, whether we're conscious of it or not. And so when you starve your body of that, it, it comes with the cost, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, one of the newer trends is grounding, where people yes. literally just walk on the ground. But yeah. indoors, they say even just like laying on the ground can help give you a similar feeling and mood lift. That resonates with me so much because my favorite way to read is laying on the ground. Like, I don't enjoy anything more when it comes to reading than being on the ground. Like, being in a comfy chair, couch, bed, those are cool, but just give me some earth. And let me just like sit on that ground or lay on that, even like laying in, in my apartment and just reading a book. I, I can knock out a book in one session. Though. That's awesome. I can just see you on your, are you on your back or you're laying on your stomach? I'm, I'm laying on my stomach, just happy. Sometimes I lay on my back, I'm like, oh, I need a little sunlight. And I'm just kind of use <laughs> that. But it's, it's great. I, 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 I feel happy just mentioning it. Reading outside is one of my favorite things mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Except when you do it on the ground, then you're more exposed to the bugs and things that's, crawling that's around. That's the kicker. The bugs and, you know, the surprises that nature brings, you know? Right. That's right. That's a factor that we need to take into account when mm -hmm. we're outside. Earlier this summer, I had to cancel on you. I was in urgent care yeah, yeah. dealing with a minor infection. All these medications that were on suppress our immune system right. so much right. that I had simple mosquito bites ballooned up. I technically was yeah, having an allergic reaction. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> But then, I won't get too into the details, but one of them got infected and it just kind of spiraled. So I had uh, to go and get it taken care of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us with autoimmune system um, issues, these basic things can all of a sudden turn into something that you have to deal with. That's the truth. That's the truth. And, and sorry to jump in, but I, I was just the, the way that it just makes you have to relearn how to move through the world because the things that prior to your diagnosis you're like oh it's just 
a mosquito bite. It's you know, it's just I just think this is a rash. We have to be so vigilant now and be like, oh, let me take care of this before we go something awful because there's been so many examples we've had of something that in the grand scheme of things, you get a hundred people, it affects ninety nine of them, you know, with no consequence. So for us it can be something that becomes a big issue. You know? That's one of the hardest things with these diseases. As I've lived with lupus longer, I've started to really get in tune with my body and figure out what is a regular type of symptom that popped up right. versus something that I need to go and get taken care of. No, no. no. That's the truth. And I think over time, as we continue the journey with these uh, illnesses, it really it gives you that confidence to say, no, I'm not overreacting. And then like, you know, I've seen this movie before. Let me let me inter let me uh, interrupt this now before it becomes something that, you know, gets out of control. So that's something I have found uh almost like you you uh, accumulate wisdom as a result of what you've been through in the past, you know. Yeah, for sure. It's right. What a journey though, man. Just everyone wants to be able to just enjoy outside and and enjoy uh nature, but you know, we have to really think about how to protect ourselves. I think we can still enjoy the outdoors. You can still go to the beach. You can still sit in the park. You just have to take um, extra precautions. And it's it's just our new normal. But it doesn't mean that we're no longer allowed outside. I don't, I don't think we have to. That's such a good point because so much of this is like, oh, I can't do this anymore because I have lupus. Well, it's just how much mm -hmm. you want to be outside and it's so important for your mental and physical health tools and resources that we have now that we didn't use to that allow us to be able to still get out and enjoy the outdoors. Yeah, so I, I think about, for example, I have um, made a point of getting a lot more accessories so I can play basketball outside. I don't play basketball as often as I used to when I was younger, but um, this I think about like, sweatbands and, and making sure I have like, all the like, gear that covers the body but isn't too heavy. I used to try to do it like in like, you know, like, like your heavy like sweatpants that like are like five pounds. <laughs> so like you just couldn't move, but they, there's so much gear out there that allows you, it's not even gear geared toward gear gear toward gear gear toward the um our community but just uh for folks who want to, to play it and and feel protected and i think it allows us to enjoy outside without you know putting yourself at risk yeah more south than i am in minnesota, minnesota <laughs> we're, we're the south right that's fair <laughs> in in the July, August, do you have a point where, like, this just doesn't make sense for me and my situation? I think last week was a week like that. Um, there was a couple of times where my son was like, can we go to the park? Can we go to the park? I was like, this isn't safe for anyone. You know what I mean? Like, it's not even, yeah. like, you know, autoimmune or not. Like, this this isn't a good idea for anyone to be outside. Um, but we also just, like... Um, Make sure we get we get it in slices so you can make sure you go early in the morning or like late in the evening. Uh you may not even though I still see people on one of the days uh in June when it was a hundred degrees and someone was like running outside with no shirt. This man just like, you know, and then ball too. I was like, I've I've shaved my head before. I've had to shave my head before. Like extreme temperatures hurt your head, right? Like, it's freezing cold or if it's hot. The sun feels like it's right here, you know. So to to see him with like a bald head, like the shirtless, you know, really ashamed guy running, I said, "Man, you, you know, you're you're really trying to challenge the elements today." Um, but outside of him, I feel like most of us are not trying to be outside when it's too hot because it can just be dangerous. So I think you have to pick those early mornings and even like those times that are like the cool of the day. So it's, it's also similar for us in the winter time. January, right, right. Being out in that extreme cold, it's twenty below yeah. a windshield. It's like we're not going outside. That's right. Yeah, you all have a lot of those. Um, if I remember from my like very brief visit to Minneapolis, those like uh walkways, right, that help you go from like all, like building to building without having to go outside. Is that thing still, yeah, 
We have, I want to say it's the largest walkway system in the country in Minneapolis. So between the buildings, just because especially downtown, the wind just blows through Plastic those buildings. Key. Right. Like wind tunnel kind of feel. Mm-hmm. No, that's not what you want. Not when it feels like negative 30 or whatever. Like, no, that's not what you want at all. So I did my undergraduate in northern Minnesota, Mm -hmm. and the school had underground tunnels to walk to class, but we still had to get from the parking lot to the main building, and that was on Lake Superior, so we'd get the wind coming off the lake, and you'd be like literally like kind of almost like horizontal just trying to get into the building. Get to the door. Yeah, I, I feel like weather like that, um, th- there's no way class ever got canceled, right? Like, if weather was always just that kind of bad, like, what would it take? <laughs> like, 10 feet of snow to get class canceled? Like, what would, it, what would it take? It literally would because when it did get canceled, I remember I couldn't get out of my apartment building right. because the snow was so high that we couldn't, we had to wait to be plowed out so we could yeah. leave. Yeah, let's say, like, that, that's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. But it was nice. There's no yeah. way we can have class when people literally can't get out of their yeah. houses. Like, I'm stuck here. But I, I wonder now, like, with the, with the college kids now having Zoom, are they just, like, professors, like, log on. <laughs> I'll email you the link. <laughs> I'll see you, see you in five minutes. You know what I mean? That was the benefit of being. We didn't have all that when we were going through it. We missed that. We missed that way, thankfully. So, Chris, are you checking apps? Like, how conscientious are you of, like, the UV rays, the humidity? Yeah, I I like to look um, particularly at the heat index. I don't pay enough. I confess, I don't pay enough attention to the UV rays, like, whether they're good or bad. I kind of just... I try to exercise an abundance of caution where I just prepare for the sun every day. Uh, unless I see, like, oh, it's cloudy, then I'm, I'm not as worried. I don't know how, like, why is that just scientifically? But I just yeah. um, tend to not worry as much on cloudy days. But the days, um, the things that, that rather that really grab my attention are the humidity, absolutely, because you can feel it um, in, in your joints and, like, the way like you're able to move around and also i don't know the science i feel like i keep adding that disclaimer but the humidity (laughs) i just want to let everyone be clear i don't know the science on it but i feel like the humidity adds to my fatigue like the days when it's going to rain the days when it's really high humidity i am so exhausted like i've been so sleepy and and it's just um it's tougher on those days it feels I wonder if it just feels more uncomfortable in general. Yeah. Yeah, so I yeah, wonder yeah. if it's just draining. Right. Could be. Could be. Could be. But like, I feel like the like the, the fronts move and stuff like that. You know, like, this feels like somehow we're more connected to the weather systems. But I don't know why. Yeah. And previously, you had mentioned, so most of your flares or the couple major ones happened in the fall, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Every year, do you feel like there's a change in how you feel when the seasons shift? Well, I, you know, what's funny is, even though they've happened in the fall, I feel like I start to feel a shift in the summertime because I think, especially when I was younger and less willing to accept my diagnosis, I was still living my life like, you know, I didn't have to take precautions. So I, I I remember particularly one summer just being outside all the time, like going swimming, playing sports, like all that stuff, you know, no protection. I had a shaved, this is the worst example is I had with my shaved bald head. I went in a, in a tank top, like a Macho Man Randy Savage tank top, right? To really I love just, it. To paint the picture for folks and played soccer in Brooklyn Bridge Park for like an hour. It was a great game. Score two goals. Great time, right? And was exhausted by the end of it. Like, I couldn't drink enough water. I was so tired. But we just do things like that. And I felt like living like that, it wouldn't cause a flare in the summertime. But by the time the fall came around, 
It's like I had nothing left for that shit and shit and temperature shift is in five minutes. I just, my body didn't have any, anything left in its savings. It was like I was too depleted to be able to withstand that change and eventually get a flare. That's talk about humidity. And I can notice after three hours, my hands getting mm-hmm. swollen. Mm-hmm. But it's really important to also think about the potential longer term impact of not fully taking the precautions needed to mm-hmm. make sure you're taking care of yourself because yeah, yeah. little things like that it adds up and it it'll hit up. you like a ton of bricks when that rent is due it is due you know <laughs> there's, yeah there's the final notice <laughs> that's just what you get you know it's tough. so we're talking about the outdoor elements sun what about, do you have issues with pollution in your area? Do you get air quality alerts sometimes? Well, I, I, I don't know if you remember the news last summer when there were like fires in Canada. Oh, yeah. Do you remember this? Yeah. yeah. And so that was miserable, right? Like it, it just really, um, everything was just really hazy. Like no matter how sunny it was on your weather app, like it would just look like dark. Like it was like the smoke had just kind of made everywhere just like dark um for those weeks last summer um, but yeah i i feel like i can tell especially after it's rained like i'm sneezing more so maybe like that mold like that happens after after rain or like obviously like pollen and things of that nature but i i don't i don't know like i would assume the answer is yes of course like if there was like you know more pollution in the air that it affects me but i haven't really like charted it that closely Every once in a while, we'll get an air quality award. I don't pay that close attention to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. I, I think I have, like, if I'm outside, like, even when I was visiting my family in Jamaica a couple of summers ago, I would just kind of, like, I want to say, like, lurk in the shadows, but I would just be in the shade. Like, I would just always, you know, kind of check it from the good shade over there. I'm going to be over there. If you want to holler at me, I'm over here. And just, just take care of yourself in that way rather than just, you know, even if I'm talking to someone in the parking lot, I'll just, you know, kind of move us over to a shaded spot in that parking lot. I'm not just going to let myself fake needless. Yeah. First, that's awesome that you have family in Jamaica. Way cool. Great. Um, second, I definitely had those experiences. Just a month or so ago, I was at a graduation party and I was with a group of people. I was like, can we please move to under a tree? Like, I right. am not okay right now. That's right. Great conversation. Love you all. Let's let's slide over to the left. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt, but right. I gotta move. <laughs> that's it. That's it. It's like I want to And be I need all of you to come with me. That's right. Let let us move. Let us move. <laughs> right. That's the way. So, Chris, yeah. have you dealt with any allergies, or um, is it more so just like sun that you're cautious? Of? Yeah, just just sun. I mean, I'm not really. Like a big, uh, you know, some people like when it's you know springtime they get all the different medicines um, ready. Uh, I, I, that's not my story. I, I take them if like I have to. Um, I used to hate taking the ones that made you groggy because I I just I would wake up so miserable. It just almost would be like you know almost like I didn't know I fell asleep. I wake up like confused. I just wasn't fun. Um, but. Yeah, I, I think I, I more pay attention to just, like, the effects and the damage that the sun can cause if I'm not protecting myself. Yeah, I'm the same way. But now, actually, my dermatologist told me to start taking allergy medicine to help with, like, the reactions to... Okay. I was like, oh, I didn't think about doing that, but that makes total sense. Well, you saying that... It makes me think about, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I learned about this whole notion of like sun poisoning. Like how sometimes you can be in the sun so long and you get like, like what we used to call it, a heat rash or something like that. Oh. It's, connect, it's actually connected to what's called sun poisoning. I haven't heard the term sun poisoning. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds very like deadly, right? Like it sounds terrible, but at the same time, it's really just a matter of like your body, your skin, really. Because I think we forget that your skin is the largest organ in your body, right? Like, so, or in your body. So, like, it's not, um, because people are like, oh, I just have the skin that's just, like, on the outside, and it's not, like, living tissue. Like, the skin is, is important to take care of. And, like, you're overindulging in sunlight. It's, like, 
you know, having too much of a certain food or something like that, and it can be poison snow. That reminds me, when I was, gosh, a junior in high school, I went with a friend to Florida. So mm -hmm. this was five, six years before I was diagnosed. Yeah, yeah. We had sunscreen on and everything, mm -hmm. but I still got these rashes on right. my arms. And right. I was like, what the heck? And they were right. like, oh, it's just a heat rash. It'll go away. Mm -hmm. But sure enough, that had to have been an early sign of lupus. I believe it too. I believe it too. But there are little things that happen prior to the diagnosis that now with this knowledge and now with this experience, you're kind of like, hmm, lupus was starting to like emerge itself in my life. I just couldn't see. I didn't know. But, that, but that's what it was, you know? Mm -hmm. Our skin being our largest organ, they always talk about how careful we have to be trying to buy clean products and not stuff with toxic chemicals in it. Right. It could be better about yeah. it. Is that something you try and pay attention to? I laugh because I think about the days where I would buy the free and what, like, it's like a soap, a shampoo, <laughs> and a conditioner. <laughs> that's, what, that's what my last one was about. It's just, I remember just being like, It'd be like mountain fresh, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm just be like mountain fresh. It smells like I chopped down trees, so. and, and you know, a lot, a lot of chemicals in those things. A lot of things that aren't that great for your body long term. So I, I do try to, um, and it's funny because now I find myself using um, products that have the same ingredients of things that I would eat. Right. So it's like, you know, a lot of like the shampoos and conditions that come across have like avocado in it, you know, and things like that, like makes it like honey in it and stuff like that. And I think that um you you really want to treat your body uh well with, with the things that you, you put on it. And the same with like, you know, you know, if you were someone who's gonna use like, you know, colognes or perfumes or makeups or lipsticks and all these things, to just understanding that like we need to be better and more critical about what those ingredients are and what they're doing to your body. It's not just about getting that right color or just getting that right scent. It's like, what's the, what's this actually doing, you know? Yeah, using products that, with foods that you eat, avocado and all yeah. that. Just saw an article on the New York Times. One of the ingredients in some sunscreens was also used in frozen pizza. Right. So it's like these shouldn't be crossing over that no, way. No, no, that's it, it's it's like a a, a sandwich company uh, that I won't name that had like yoga mat material in their bread. You know, like I just gross should not be sandwich in the yoga mat shouldn't have anything in common. You know what I mean? So I'm right there with you. So I'm really adamant about trying to eat clean. So yeah. now that we're talking about this, I'm like, I really need to step up my game on the product side because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're just you know, yeah, we're eat, we're eating clean, but we're washing dirty. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anything else that you're doing deal with kind of these extreme temperatures, other than. You, we protect ourselves. We try and stay out of the shade. We or out of the sun, yeah. be in the shade. And other than that, it's really just about figuring out what is the right level of that you can handle, right? Anything else? I, I think a key component of all of this in the summertime is hydration. You have to be hydrated. The hydration helps your skin. Hydration helps your body temperature. Helps in blood pressure. You can't go wrong with being hydrated, right? And I just feel like this helps. This is a way for me to take care of myself, right? Like I, I need to drink more water in the summer because I'm sweating more, right? I, I'm I'm dehydrating faster, and so yeah, just hydrate. Like you know, you don't want to overhydrate because you feel like you know, like you're a ship or something. Like you feel like you're like the ocean's inside you, but I think you want to definitely find that sweet spot um, where you're hydrating properly. And something that I learned that I think is really important is that but if you're only drinking water when you get thirsty, by that time you're already dehydrated. You have to be continuous throughout the day because otherwise yeah. you're behind. Every once in a while we'll get like coconut water or something is. with a little 
electrolytes just to boost a little bit more, especially in this type of weather oh, when you're totally. out for a period of time. I sprinkle a little sea salt in my morning smoothies in the summer. I don't, I don't go overboard, or I don't want a salty <laughs> blueberry smoothie or whatever. But, but like, I sprinkle a little bit of salt, and that helps you to um, retain some water. That I'll totally start doing that. Yeah, yeah. In a big rate exclusive. Put salt in the <laughs> smoothie. Thanks for sharing. I'll put it on Tip Tuesday. That's right. Come on, that sounds gross. <laughs> 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 well, I think it's funny. It's like we're talking about all these things to like take care of yourself, and drinking water in the heat is the most probably one of the oh. most obvious things. <laughs> we all like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Plus, it, people, <laughs> but it's so obvious, it's easy to forget. And I think there's a lot right. of people. I was kind of ear hustling during my infusion this morning, so shout out to the person who was saying this. Um, and they were trying to get uh, that person's vein so they could start their infusion. They were having a tough time. They, oh, did you drink any water? They say and the person said that they mainly subsist off of coffee. They don't, they're not a big water drinker. And I just like privately shook my head because you need to drink water. And I know too many adults. I want to I rant for a little bit. I know too many adults who just don't like water. And it's, it, it bothers me to my core. I can understand little kids, right? Little kids, they want this, they like sweet things and stuff like that. Gotta get them drink on water too, right? Eat some food, drink some water, you drink more water, the food tastes better. I'm here for it. But adults, drink more water. It will cost you your life if you don't drink enough water. It leads to dehydration. There's so many other problems in your life. You know, you're, you're too grown to not drink water. Like, like every soda doesn't count. You know, like coffee doesn't count. Tea kind of counts. It hydrates. So the other things don't count. You need to drink water. You need to drink water. Drink water. I can't say this. We had a nutritionist on the podcast a few weeks ago, and she said the single best thing you can do for yourself is drink water. We're so worried about all this food and everything. It's like that's the easiest thing you can do. It's Easy. free. Tell and me. if you don't like it like put some lemon in it or something right like, figure it out figure it out don't just write it off entirely put a little squeeze of lemon i can think like a little like celery water like whatever you need like 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 uh you know kiwi in there whatever you need you're gonna get fancy put some mint to make it happen drink your water save your own life if you grew up in the generation where we had like Capri Suns and all this stuff, like, I, mean, I don't think I really drank water regularly until I was an adult. I, I would put it this way. I feel like I, I, you know, I got thirsty. I wanted like iced tea or something. Or, you know, you're in gym class or you're in a little basketball team and you just played for two hours and you're cold to the PE teacher says, all right, water break. Are you drinking water for four seconds? Right, so we weren't socialized to drink a lot of water, but we're adults now, everyone. Drink some water now. We know better. When I was growing up, I'd get done with a hockey game, and I, I got to get Dr. Pepper. Right. And I'd be like, you, you want some water? No, I want Dr. Pepper. That's right. <laughs> Quint Chugging my first. Pop. <laughs> <In black men. laughs> right. It's crazy, but times have so changed because now all the kids have oh, their giant water bottles. The water weighs more than them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> freaking four gallons in third grade. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So, Chris, do you have plans to be outside more this summer, or is it just kind of the regular? Well, yeah, I, I think, and everyone who has kids in their life can attest to this, I think having children around you makes you have to be outside i think it'd be very easy for me to just like be inside with my book reading on the carpet but um like after this i'm gonna go outside with my with my son but they're, they're like you have to go outside today i'm like you're right you have to go outside today. so i'm gonna be outside with them i will say that's probably one of my favorite things about having kids is yeah. that it just gets me outside right tell you tell me Wear my cool little UV protective fat and 
hang out with the other parents and make it so easy. Yeah. Super fun. Okay, Chris. Well, I want you to take care of yourself. Stay cool. Stay to the same. For everyone out there, if you haven't drank any water, get some water. I encourage you to check out the protective gear that we've been talking about. I'll drop a couple links in the show notes if you want some suggestions. Other than that, please like and share this so we can reach as many people as possible with autoimmune diseases. Chris, thank you for being here. As always, it's so fun to talk to you. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Sharon. This is great. Take care.